That would be wonderful. All right, cool. Hi, Di. Ah, sweet. All right, you guys, so awesome to have you here. Okay, so today, what are we talking about? My name is Anissa Bramwitz, and I help people who are taking their articulated game to the next level. Articulate storyline, yes, definitely. Uh, by developing interactive stories. Now, this is the thing. What do interactive stories combine? Scenario and stories, right? An awesome uh, interface. <laughs> so uh, one of the things uh, that I've been talking about this week really is the focus is on how do you get people to, um, especially when you're collaborating, right? How do you get people to give you those juicy, juicy scenarios and interactions so that you can build things that mean something to people, so that you can build things that when people are experiencing your interactive story, they're like, whoa, that could be me, right? That's what you're looking for. And it's huge. And one of the things is, you know, if, if you're working in an L&D field, you're collaborating with experts, right? You're not designing things for other instructional designers most times, unless you work in academia. Um, you're designing things for people in uh, the areas where people are trying to apply and make better decisions. And really that's what scenarios are about. That's what e-learning really should be about is helping make, helping people make better decisions in a safe place. So the focus has been for this week, at least, is you know going back to, to the roots of how do you talk to people who are experts in the field, who are practitioners in the field, and how do you get them to tell you the awesome juicy information that you need to craft compelling scenarios that people actually get stuck on, that people actually who are novices would say, wow, you know, this is a really compelling decision. And all of these options really sound valid to me. How do you do that? How do you craft stuff like that? Well, you got to talk to the right people. You can't make that stuff up from a manual. It just won't work. You may have tried. However, that's when you start questioning uh, whether you're like in the right field, whether you're creative enough. So if you can relate to this, I'm glad you're here. Now, if you're looking for things about like, uh, you know, I'm going to be Addy or Sam or all that kind of stuff, that's not what we talk about here. Um, my focus is to help you get to the next level. And if you're already doing amazing work in storyline and you're saying, I'm not having enough impact and the things I'm doing are not resonating as much as I want them to, then this is for you. If you're looking for ideas on how to, um, you know, uh, discuss things that have no relevance to actually implementation and you're into the uh, theorizing of, of topics and subjects and um, not solving any problems, then this isn't for you. Go someplace else because there's tons of other people talking about Addy versus Sam, right? That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about how to get the info that you need to a solution and solve a problem for somebody. All right. So thanks so much for being here. Now, if you're still around, that means you want to solve a problem. So one of the things that happens, and I've been talking about this throughout this week, is when you're talking to people uh, where you're trying to craft real, um, real meaningful scenarios for the front line, there's a, usually a disconnect from people who are designing the manuals and preaching about the manuals versus the people who are actually using them in the real world, right? Can I get a heck yeah, right? There's a disconnect. And it, the it happens not because it's meant to be there, like, you know, that headquarters, let's say, is pontificating. It's that, you know, it's a manual, let's say it's a strategy, but how it's used in the context of when you're under pressure, uh, when you got to talk to people in real language, um, you're going to modify that in a way that will help you achieve the best outcome. So one of the things you're going to do as a really awesome interactive storyteller is you're going to go and find people who are using these tools, living the living the life that you want to sell to your learners, right? They're in a position where you want to get everybody else to, uh, the top performers, and you're going to say, okay, let me get your context. Let me capture your language. Let me capture those stories. Let me capture those experiences, those decisions, those beliefs, because I want to put all of that into my amazing interactive story. So, of course, the question comes up. What's the question that comes up? The question that comes up is, what the heck do you ask somebody <laughs> during those sessions uh, to actually get story out of them? Because, you know, the last time I did a story was in high school and it was a triangle and then an inverse triangle. How do you do that, right? 
Um, and one of the things you want to do is you have to realize that if you tell somebody, tell me a story, they're going to give you um, an account. And somebody said, uh, David said, uh, yeah, day in the life. The day in the life is good. But what happens is that people kind of um, append it because they've been telling the story the, you know, the same way throughout. And they'll tell you one version of it. So what you want to do is one, you want to talk to more than one person so you can have more than one version of that story because it helps you see trends that people don't even realize are going on. And two, you want to ask them specific questions that unpack that, that basically give you the elements of a hero's journey. Now, what is a story, right? Your story is a story in its essence, and I'm really, really like breaking this down to very, very simple things. The story is three elements. A character who has a desire, basically wants something, and something's in the way, right? Those are three things that are basically make up a story. A hero who has a goal, and there's all these challenges in the middle. Now, this is what's really super cool, right? This is what gets me excited and I get all shivers about it. You are um, crafting a story for your hero and uh, the outcome is, you know, being awesome at life, right? And the scenarios that you craft are the challenges for that hero to overcome to get to the awesome. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, to me, that's just like, <laughs> this is the best. And so uh, when you're talking to somebody, you have to ask them specific questions about why they even got started on that journey. And one of the things that uh, I do today is just give you a couple of questions to get you started with this. I have a whole script which goes through basically the full story arc. That would take about two hours for me to deconstruct here. But, um, but what's really cool is that what it allows you to do as well is to step away from you being the expert. Because get this, this is what happens. We'll talk to people after we've, um, let's say, read a bunch of info and some manuals, and you have this, inadvertently, you think you get it, right? So you'll walk into that conversation with, um, with your ideas, with your own lens, with your own perceptions about how stuff works. And one of the challenges is, and this is one of the things that, you know, I really work on with my, with my, in my coaching program, with my students is you got to pretend, you know, nothing. And for a lot of people, this is not, a, right? Like, because you've been taught that, you know, when Barbara Walters does an interview, she research, she wants to ask provocative questions. She's going to ask questions that nobody's ever asked before. Right. Who's with me. Right. <laughs> So what happens is we think that the more we know about something, the more, the better that interview is going to be, the better that conversation with the end you going to be. And that's actually not true because, and, and people are like, oh, Anna, you know, it, it makes, I make, I ask better questions. And I'm like, yes and no. You ask better questions that might impress that person like you did your homework and you, that's great. But that's not what we're going for here. We're looking for the struggle, the the you know the things that are um, uh, the contextual uh, or the accurate details. You can get that from a subject matter expert. You can get that from uh, looking at the manual. Uh, the fact that things are very um, documented, we already have. We're not looking for more info, right? Who here is missing info? Really, everything's already <laughs> basically documented, right? What we're missing, though, right, is stories. That's what we're missing. And it's not, you know, uh, one of the things that happens is, you know, when you're when you're telling a story of a character, you've never been in that situation. So you can't ever imagine why it was worth for that person to get on that journey. And that's what these questions are trying to figure out. The other thing you don't know, if you're, uh, you know, if if you have a bunch of practitioners and you're in an HR position is all the all the luggage that they came in with. Right. That that basically put a film on those 
um, situations that made it difficult for them to make the right decision. The bias, the assumptions, the past experience, the old job stuff, all that stuff messes you up when you're making a decision. Because if it didn't, then we could say, well, it's written right here and there's a little protocol for it. So why doesn't everybody go step one, step two, step three, step four? Why don't they do that? Because of all the mess that's inside, right? All the the things where we're trying to be polite, where we think things might turn out differently, where we didn't do it this way before, or this didn't work for me. There's all this stuff. You as, a, as an outside performer, you don't have that insight. You have no clue. And so that's why I think it's actually amazing when you uh, really disconnect yourself from the topic because you're coming into that conversation with some, with some childlike curiosity, wide-eyed wonder. You know nothing. You really want to learn. And that, that curiosity comes through and also one of the things that happens is this person is no longer feeling like you're testing them. They're sharing experience and the experience stops being very much about exploring if the steps were followed in the right order. Because guess what? You're going to get that from the from the subject matter expert you're working with. But it becomes about the struggles that it that this person had to go through in order to become the best at what they do. And that's what you want, because it's the struggle that we're trying to address in e-learning. It's not about following protocols. Everybody can already download the job aid, right? It's about making sure that people have an exposure to the wrong ideas, to the wrong assumptions, explore those paths, figure out they're not actually useful, and go back and try again, a try a different approach in a safe environment that helps them then see that journey and say, hey, maybe I could do that. I mean, I used to believe this, but maybe I could do that. Maybe I could be really good. Okay, where's the training, right? So that's what we're looking for here. So that's the mindset I want you to have. I want you to give up all those attachments to being um, an expert, uh, attachments to having all the answers. Childlike curiosity. Absolutely, childlike curiosity. And one of the things you're doing is you're documenting an experience and you're trying to capture emotions. For a lot of people, they'll tell me things like, oh, Anna, that's okay. You know, my company is really sophisticated and we're very serious. So we don't do emotions. We don't do stories. That's not us. I'm like, wait a minute. So you're telling me the people that work at your workplace, when they go home, they just like unplug and shut down like like a robot. No, they go home and watch movies, play games, uh, watch YouTube, play with their kids, you know, connect with their family, all those things. So there are still humans. Humans love stories. Humans also make decisions with emotions, right? It's huge. So if you think you're one of those people who has very serious uh, organization and they can't you can't use emotions or people in your work don't make assumptions then either one you're bsing yourself or two you're just uh you're just afraid to push things that that actually make a difference and you got to take ownership of that either yay or nay but i'm here to tell you if you're telling yourself it's not going to work for you you're right but if you admit that you got to take this to the next level by incorporating emotion, because that's how people make decisions, then baby, we got to talk. All right. So um, let me just take, I'm going to take you through four questions because I don't want to make this like an all morning thing for you. Right. And I want to add a lot of value because I'm here to over deliver. <laughs> so let me just bring up one of these. Where's my uh, special script here? Okay. So. Let me just make sure I've got this over here. Bear with me here, friends. All right. Okay. So, and it's not like I'm quizzing you or anything, but I just want to put it in context, right? Three elements of story, right? Character, desire, something's in the way. Character, obstacle, desire. Just if everybody followed that, that would be like make an infinitely better story than most of the crap that's out there, which is, uh, Judy, when she really wants to get good. And then the rest of the training, you go through this. Here, Judy, here's another <laughs> another uh, operations manual checklist. Isn't this exciting? I don't care about Judy. 
Her obstacles mean nothing to me. And at the end, Judy gets to still be new. But now she's so knowledgeable. Who cares, right? I don't care. So that's why you're doing these things. You, you want to create a compelling character who actually wants something and, and wanting something for real purposes. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, at the end of the day, I just want to have more, more knowledge in my head. No, but if they do, there's a reason behind it. So you're trying to find out those reasons. And that's what these questions are for, because we got to care about these people, right? Because they're people and we're people and our learners are people and they connect with others emotionally. So here's some solid questions uh, that you're going to, you're just, love, okay. So um, one of the things that you want to ask is, what was your life like before you got on your path to being awesome, right? David's got it, the quest. It's the quest. We're all on the quest. We're all looking for adventure. You, with your training, are setting a call to adventure. You really because every single day you and I are in our comfort zone, right? Everything's great. To learn something new, admit you have a gap, Take time out of your day to admit you were wrong and actually go and go through the tutorials, approach something a different way, learn a new six step sales system. You're stepping outside of your comfort zone into the unknown. Guess what that is? It's a call to adventure. It's a quest, baby. Right. Are you selling it to me? Are you selling it to me? you got to sell it to me. Right. Yes. And you're getting so what you need to do is find out. Um, what is their life like? What was their life like before they became the heir? And the reason you are asking that, there's a reason you're asking that, and it is this. There has to be a reason why your character in your interactive story gets on that journey. And let me tell you this. A lot of people assume they're like, yeah, well, the reason you want to become a best salesperson is because you want to make a lot of money. Yeah, sure. But there's a reason why you want to make a lot of money, right? And those people tell you, if you've created enough rapport, and some people said that, it's not going to be because they want to make a lot of money. That's the thing. Why do they want to do that? Give me some ideas. Why would somebody want to make a lot of money? There's reasons. They're going to tell you. You're never even going to come up with some of these things yourself. They're so good. Like, here's a reason. Is because when I was little... My dad couldn't afford to take me to Disney World. And now my little girl's turning eight. And all she does is talk about being a princess from Frozen. And I can't wait to take her to Disneyland so I can get her dressed up in that castle so she can have that memory. Yeah, it's money, but it's not about the money, right? You're never going to come up with that stuff by yourself. You're good. I mean, you can try. And after years of doing this and also working with my students, you know, I can spitball a few. But for it to sound genuine, you got to talk to people. So you got to figure out why do they want it? What's that desire, right? What was it like before they got awesome, right? What was their day like? Where were they struggling? What was the mundane, uninspired life now to where they got to? And what's the desire, right? You want to ask to what is success like? And success is exactly this. It's not, so for some people, it's money in the bank, right? But there's a reason behind that. And like I said, maybe it's being able to do that for your little girl. You got to figure that out. That makes a compelling story. Make somebody connect because who doesn't want that for their little girl, right? Awesome. I mean, it's not like everybody should want that, but that's what this dad wants. And I admire that. And I can connect with that because he wants to do better for his family. Like, boom. Are you feeling it? Are you feeling, isn't that interesting? Well, I want to help this guy overcome challenges. I want to help this guy make sure he's talking to customers the right way, overcoming his self-confidence issues during these sales calls. I'm going to help him through all these scenarios, handle himself better because I want him to take his little girl to Disneyland. Cool, right? Different way of thinking about it. So the other thing that you're going to ask is... What were the hardest things about starting and sticking to this new process or protocol? So it's funny because one of the things we want to figure out as well is why do people stick? You're going to get people to move from, I have like, 
think about you're, you're going to get people to move from a place that doesn't, um, they're, they're completely ignorant and unaware that there's a better way. And you're trying to move them to a place where they are enabled, excited, ready to step out of the, the comfort zone, right? But in the middle, there's this warm part. And a warm learner is just as bad as a cold learner. The warm learner knows there's a gap, but they're not necessarily motivated or inspired or the minute they hit that little bump, they're like, Ugh, and then they go right back to the comfort zone, right? Which is cold. So how did somebody all the way through to being enabled, excited, right? How do you do that? Well, you got to that story and you got to give them challenges that show them they're capable of living in that hot zone of that e achieving their dream. And so that's what you're going to be exploring with your practitioners is how, you know, what were some serious, you already, you know, you're implementing the six step sales system. What gets in the way? And my what? My buddies all laughed at me. That was hard because nobody else was following the same protocols. And I felt like I was like, what am I doing? Like everybody else is okay. Why am I pursuing this new thing? Right? Could be so many things. So you want to ask them what got in the way? It could be that I didn't feel supported. So how did you overcome that? Right? You're asking all these things because you're not only discovering, you know, their path to their desire, but all the things that some might experience as they're trying to do this, as they're trying to crawl out of the crab bucket, right? Because you know what happens to one crab and all the other crabs pull them down. Well, how do you help this person? That, right? And that's what you're trying to discover. So I hope those were helpful to you. There's, and I'll, I'll get into those. We've been going on for <laughs> quite a bit of time now, and I actually have a have a session uh, coming up with my students. So. One of the things um, I want you to consider is that, like I said, there's going to be uh, there's going to be resistance, and you know there's people who jump on these calls and they, I'm just going to get a quick tip here and there, and I'm just going to implement it. This is this is the kind of stuff you do if you're into it. If you're really like you go home and you you can't shut it off. You're thinking about. How you can you make more impact? How can you make something better? You wake up in the morning revved to like get back in so you can accelerate and and that failure doesn't scare you because you know this is that's the kind of process that this is right. So in April, uh, which is April second, ha, huh, we made it. <laughs> um, we're launching a, a program and it's it's for interactive storytellers. Uh, basically, I want to basically work with people who who don't as a fad or are looking for the the quick and easy rapid button these are people who are passionate about having and taking themselves to the next level without all this uh you know uh discussion of theory they're actually they're like i don't care which strategy you use as long as the result is showing me that i'm having some sort of impact that's big that you're looking for you're looking to create a cause right and this is what drives you and you can't live without it and the other things are as as a good product up that's that sounds like you get on a call with me let's talk because i want to help you because this is going to be absolutely awesome and let me just tell you that one of the things that is not only putting out a good product and creating an experience people they finish they go holy shit that was actually really good like imagine having that kind of experience that's awesome right like like for me that just gives me tingles like that's the kind of stuff i want to put out there and that's the kind of stuff i want other people to put out there so if you're interested let's book a call let's talk about where you want to take yourself this is for people who already know how to do a lot of and they're and they just want to take themselves to the next level because this is next level all right so so awesome to have you here. You guys are great. Thank you for all your questions. I will, if I have any that I want to incorporate into my next uh, live session, I'm going to be here again tomorrow, same time, 9.30ish. Sorry, today we had some <laughs> some awesomeness happen, so it was a little delayed, but join us more. Let's talk. All right. Okay. Have a wonderful rest of the day, friends. Thank you for being here.